You won't believe the shocking story of this former NBA player's disappearance. Make sure to stay until the end to see what exactly caused Bison Daily to disappear from the world. Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a deeper look into the story of Bison Daly and his disappearance. Many of you may not recognize the name Bison Daly. Well, that's because he was formerly named Brian Williams. He was born in Fresno, California to his parents Eugene Williams and Patricia Phillips. He also happened to have an older brother named Miles DeBoer. Something else that's important to note is that he was officially diagnosed with clinical depression. He happened to be one of, if not the first, publicized instance of depression for an NBA player. Daley had even admitted that he tried to attempt suicide one night, and his mother hinted that there may have been a second attempt. Luckily, Daley was able to battle through those issues for the majority of his career. Bison Daley graduated from the University of Maryland and began playing basketball while he was in college. He played at Arizona for two full seasons before getting drafted by the Orlando Magic with the 10th overall pick in the 1991 NBA Draft. Daley spent two seasons with the Magic before heading over to the Denver Nuggets for two more seasons. But his NBA journey wasn't done just yet. He went to the Los Angeles Clippers for one year after that, followed by a year with the Chicago Bulls in which he played with Michael Jordan and won an NBA championship. Then finally, two seasons with the Detroit Pistons. He retired very abruptly right before the 1999 season began. Well, he was only 30 years old and in his prime. He was even the highest paid player on the Pistons, but had gotten into it with members of the organization and made the decision to walk away from the sport. What makes this decision even more surprising is that he turned down the rest of his five-year, $36 million contract instead of simply being traded to a different team. It's safe to say that he was officially done with the sport and didn't feel like playing it anymore by that time. Moving over to his stats during his NBA career, he showed flashes of greatness. He averaged 8 points, 6.2 rebounds, and 1.1 assists per game while on the Denver Nuggets. That was slightly better than when he put up 7.7 .7 points, 4.8 rebounds, and .6 assists per game during his first two years of his NBA career with the Magic. But his career slowly began to turn around after those four seasons. He put up 15.8 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 1.9 assists per game as a member of the Clippers during the 1995 season. Then he followed up that career year with an NBA championship with the Bulls. It was at this point in his career that many teams were interested in Bison, but he eventually headed over to the Pistons and became the starting center. Those two years with Detroit ended up being the best two years of his career, posting 14 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 1.3 assists per game. Those numbers may seem a little bit lower than his numbers with the Clippers, but his two seasons with the Pistons made a huge impact for the organization. An example of that? He'd averaged 16.2 points and 8.9 rebounds per game during his first year with the organization, with each of those stats slotting in as career highs. Here's another random stat from his basketball career. Bison Dele was named to the 1986-87 McDonald's All-American team. Now that we've covered most of his life, let's head into the scary part of his story. On July 8, 2002, Bison Daly simply vanished from the world at age 33. He'd been retired from the NBA for around four years now, and since then bought a boat named the Hakuna Matata. Not to mention the fact that he even dated Madonna during his time off from basketball. But anyways, he'd planned to take his prized boat out for a trip. His plan began in Papeete, then straight toward the island of Raiatea, and finally Hawaii. On this voyage that he'd been planning, he took his brother Miles, his girlfriend Serena Carlin, and the boat's captain Bertrand Saldo. The trip kicked off on July 6th, with the police noticing three phone calls coming from passengers on the boat over the next two days. But starting on the 8th, nobody heard a word out of anybody on the boat, with all communication just halting. Later that day, Miles DeBoard was seen in Moria with his girlfriend Erica Weiss. Miles had told Erica that both Bison Daly and Serena Carlin were out on a different island, while their captain, Bertrand Saldo, was in Moria with a few friends of his. Weiss told authorities that she never had any intention of meeting Bison, so she didn't read too much into the situation. She also claimed that Miles wasn't particularly happy with his younger brother, stating that it seemed Bison treated Miles very poorly. But a little over a week had passed without any communication from Dele, Carlin, and Saldo. Miles was the only person who'd spoken to anybody since the four of them took off on their grand voyage. On July 16th, Miles was seen driving a boat into the Phaeton Bay Marina over in Taravao. The label on the boat read Aria Bella, but it was clear that somebody had tampered with the name and changed it. After closer examination of the name, it was found out that the former name was the Hakuna Matata. Miles was piloting the same boat that the four of them took off on, except it had been renamed and three passengers were missing. 
Most of his family and friends didn't read too much into the situation at first, due to Bison living off the grid for extended periods of time. Many people simply assumed that he and Carlin were enjoying a beautiful vacation together in Hawaii. However, there was a sighting of Bison Daylight in Phoenix. The only catch was that the man wasn't Bison Daylight. On September 5, 2002, a man walked into the Certified Mint, a coin shop in Phoenix, and claimed to be Brian Williams. He happened to have Williams' passport along with all of his credit cards, and attempted to purchase $500,000 worth of gold coins. This mystery man ended up negotiating with the shop, buying only $152,000 worth of gold coins instead of the previous option of $500,000. The check that the man sent over to the bank was eventually deposited and cleared, although Bison's financial advisor had noticed a very big change. The address on the check was completely different from his usual one, along with a completely different phone number. His financial advisor had begun to worry, so he called the number that was listed on the check. The call went straight to voicemail, with the voice just stating that his name was B, but it was obvious that it was not Bison. The advisor immediately called the certified mint along with the police, to stop the charge and the man that was claiming to be his client. This particular mystery man was scheduled to arrive at the Mint to finalize his transaction, so the authorities had set up shop and waited for the man to arrive. To the complete surprise of the police, the man that arrived was none other than Miles DeBoer. That's right, Bison's older brother. Miles had found a way to manipulate himself out of his detainment, knowing that there was no true concern for the well-being of Bison, Serena, or Bertrand just yet. Miles claimed that Dele was the one who first signed the check and called the Mint, and that he was just sent over to finalize the transaction while Bison was doing something else. The police attempted to call Bison a few times to try and make some sense to the whole situation, but he never answered. With no true evidence against Miles at the time, they released him from custody. However, they soon recognized the mistake that they'd made after finding out about the disappearance of none other than Dele, Carlin, and Saldo. It was at this point that people began to find out about Miles piloting the boat back by himself, and that he was the only person left that took off on July 6th. Miles fled the scene and headed off to Arizona, where he would tell his version of the story to his girlfriend Erica. Miles claimed that he and his brother got into a very heated argument, with Carlin attempting to break the two brothers up, only to be knocked over. She had apparently hit her head on a boat cleat and died from her injury. Miles then went on to state that Saldo had told the two brothers to report the body to the police and return back to shore. Shortly after that, Dele had beat Saldo over the head with a wrench until he was dead. Miles finished his story up by saying that Bison began walking over to Miles, who eventually pulled out a gun and shot Bison multiple times in self-defense. DeBoard said that he threw each of the bodies overboard while also weighing them down with bodybuilder weights. Miles was the main suspect in an ongoing investigation that even included the FBI, so he called his mother Patricia once he knew that the walls were closing in on him. His last words were, I found something and tried to cover it up, but I didn't do what they're saying. No one will believe me. Shortly after that, he threatened to kill himself, and he followed through. He was found on the beach in Tijuana and had reportedly died of an insulin overdose. Miles remained in a coma for two weeks before being announced dead on September 28th. Nobody will ever know the true story of what happened on that faithful day of July 8th now, nor will they ever find the bodies. Could Miles have been telling the truth that he acted in self-defense? Possibly. He could have also killed all three of them himself without any thought of self-defense if he was simply mad at his brother and wanted to punish him. The FBI also made their own conclusion after their investigation and believed that Miles used the gun to force Bison, Serena, and Bertrand off the boat into shark-infested waters, where he then got into the driver's seat and took off, leaving them alone in the ocean. It was truly a sad and horrifying story of betrayal and loss of life, with the world having far too many of these cases nowadays. Now that you've made it to the end of the video, make sure to check out the first link in our description. Leave us a like, subscribe, and share the video. Let us know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to keep watching more of our videos, because they're amazing and you'll love them.